we need to talk about California again, guys. Hi, everyone. Specifically, we need to talk about the East Bay, specifically San Ramon. We've talked about this a few weeks ago because there was an earthquake swarm. And guys, there is an ongoing earthquake swarm right now. Still, not one quake, not an aftershock sequence, a swarm, a cluster. And that swarm is occurring along the Calaveras Fault. And that fault, guys, we talked about it, it's not a minor fault. This is actually quite a scary one. And to see a cluster like this on this fault line, if you know my channel, of course, we have to talk about this. And of course, you have questions and I'm here to answer them for you guys. And if you could leave this video an early like and press the hype button to support my channel. Thank you so much for doing that, guys. So the Calaveras Fault, it's a major active branch of the San Andreas Fault System. We've learned in the past that faults that are parallel or just in the vicinity of the San Andreas Fault can also trigger the San Andreas Fault. So there's a spider web of fault lines that could do something and could trigger a chain reaction. And that's not good. So if you watch the channel on a regular basis, you know this. Side faults matter, parallel faults matter, branch faults matter. Because branch faults especially, they can transfer stress and stress transfer can trigger other faults. And we've just recently learned, I put that in the end screen because you won't believe it, that two major monsters have triggered each other in the past and probably will again and they're both overdue and if that happens this will be the biggest disaster ever that at least north america has seen in its lifetime but probably beyond that in the end screen it's called wiped out that's in the thumbnail but stress fence transfer let's get back to this can trigger other faults including major faults so let's slow this down and go step by step what this earthquake swarm that is happening today as we speak is doing. What is happening right now? As of December 15th, 2025, multiple earthquakes were recorded within hours of near San Ramon in California. And just today alone, the following earthquakes occurred magnitude 2.1, magnitude 2.0, magnitude 2.2. And these events occurred just within a few hours of each other. So they were not isolated. That's why we're speaking about a swarm. The depths were measured at approximately six to eight kilometers, roughly like five mile-ish, something like that. That's about four to five miles deep. So these earthquakes are occurring approximately um, four to five kilometers, that's two and a half to three miles southeast of downtown San Ramon. Thankfully, the quakes have caused no injuries, no structural damage reported, but that's not the problem that we're having with this swarm of earthquakes, right? This is not a new event. This swarm did not start today. This seismic activity actually began way back in October this year, and it has continued through November, and it's still ongoing in December, in mid-December. So earlier in the same swarm sequence, we had over 40 earthquakes that occurred in a 48-hour period. The largest even reached a magnitude of 3.8. Then we had several earthquakes with a magnitude 3 plus, so over magnitude 3, that were followed within minutes. And then numerous magnitude 2 to 2.9 earthquakes that have clustered tightly. And the clustering behavior is critical here, guys, because it tells us something important. Unfortunately, I have to say, this is a swarm we're not talking about aftershocks. The scientists do not and they cannot identify a clear main shock here in this sequence, at least not yet. So are we really keen to identify a larger main shock? Not really. So right now, there is no single dominant earthquake like a main shock that is followed by decay, that is followed by aftershocks of smaller size. But what are we seeing instead? We are seeing tight spatial clustering of these earthquakes, repeated small magnitude events, similar depth, 
Continued false segment activation. And this doesn't sound good, guys. This is the definition of an earthquake swarm. And that swarm behavior, what does that indicate? Well, local stress redistribution, minor slip transients, changes in fluid pressure at depth. It does not automatically mean, guys, that something big is going to happen there and that we're all have to be afraid we don't have it does not mean that a large earthquake is imminent but it also does not mean nothing that's the problem so let's have a closer look at where exactly is this happening the earthquakes are occurring along the northern segment of the calaveras fault and the active zone is yeah fairly long. It's roughly three to four kilometers long. That's about two to two and a half miles. And the depth of these clusters lies between seven to nine kilometers. That's roughly four to six miles. And this places the activity in the upper to mid-crustal section of the Calaveras Fault. And that matters, guys. It's important because this is where tectonic stress is stored but also released. What is the Calaveras Fault, might some of you ask. Let's talk about this fault. The Calaveras Fault is a right lateral strike slip fault. So that means one side moves horizontally past the other. Similar motion style like the San Andreas Fault, right? The fault moves like this. So if, if you're standing here and your friend is standing there, all of a sudden, if a big earthquake happens, you can be completely dislocated. And that Calaveras Fault is connected with the San Andreas Fault branch system. It looks like the branch of a tree, all these fault lines. It forms the eastern branch of the San Andreas Fault system. And the fault extends approximately 190 kilometers. That's 119 miles. It's long. It's significant, right? It runs basically from Hollister in Central California northwards through the East Bay and it connects near Dun Dublin and Dunville with the Hayward Fault. And this is quite densely populated, which makes it even more problematic. We have seen images of sidewalks, the curbsides completely off and dislocated. So. In, in short words, this means the system is structurally connected. It's not isolated. It's not an independent system. It's like a spider web of stress. So this area has quite a bit of stuff like that. And one important detail, we've talked about this in previous videos, is the A seismic creep, the cover the Calaveras Fault is also known for its aseismic creep. So that means part of the fault moves slowly and continuously with, without producing large earthquakes, but it's in steady motion. And again, I'm mentioning these images. Sidewalks are offset, curbs are cracked, roads have shifted. Um, one side is moving one way and the other side is moving the opposite way. And well, if you pave over it, if this is your garden, your curb, whatever, it's displacing. And you can see the creep. That creep relieves some stress. Yes, but not all. It's not relieving all the stress. So how big can this fault actually go? Well, geological and seismic studies show that the Calaveras Fault is capable of producing quite large earthquakes. And that's why this is scary when we see these clusters. And for such a long time, right? It can produce in earthquakes in the range of magnitude 6.5 up to magnitude 7.0. And that is not speculative. That is based on fault length, slip rate, and historical behavior. A similar fault line like, like this was also the fault in Myanmar that produced the 7.8 earthquake. So here's the critical part, guys, that I see is the biggest problem aside from the geological problem. It's the population exposure that we have in this area because this fault passes right beneath densely populated areas. 
people build subdivision after subdivision right on the fault lines. This includes the municipalities of San Ramon, Dublin, Dunville, and parts of the East Bay. And unfortunately, this is not remote wilderness anymore. And that's why even moderate activity gets a lot of attention because this could turn to be very, very bad, we have to say. So what we're seeing right now, and especially for this extended period of time, is this normal for this Calavera's fault or for this spider web? Um, mm, here's the part that is interesting. The Northern Calavera's fault has a history of recurrent low magnitude swarms. Whew, so that sounds maybe a little bit soothing. Okay, it has done that. Similar swarm sequences occurred in 2015 and 2017 and 2021. Those swarms, though, they lasted one to three days. They have produced magnitudes up to 4.0. It did not escalate in major earthquakes. So the current sequence is still within that historical pattern, but it's lasting way longer. And what is really important to be aware of Every swarm, every swarm can evolve differently. It doesn't have to show the same behavior each time with the same result. Let's have a look at the bigger context. Why does this still matter? The San Andreas Fault is widely considered to be locked and loaded in multiple sections. So scientists agree not the entire San Andreas Fault must rupture at once. It can but it doesn't have to. Partial ruptures are also possible, and then the stress can migrate. So branch faults, like the Calaveras fault, can influence stress loading, especially if it's rumbling over such a long period of time, over several months. And recent studies have confirmed something else. I quickly mentioned it. Large fault system can interact. One major fault can influence another, Cascadia Fault and San Andreas Fault, absolutely underestimated. Check out the video on the end screen that is called Wiped Out. It's not good. So monitoring swarms like this is absolutely crucial and essential. And we're doing this. I'm on the pulse of this for you, of course. We should not panic. We should not predict anything because we don't know, we cannot know, but we have to understand what the crust is doing right now. And the current status, in my opinion, guys, let me know in the comments if you have a different opinion. It's, it's clear, it's very clear as of now. The earthquakes remain small, no damage, no injuries, no escalation signal, no confirmed main shock. So this is basically active monitoring territory, not emergency territory. But ignoring it, guys, would absolutely be irresponsible because the situation can change quickly. So we watch, we monitor, especially if you live there, we stay informed. Preparedness. Preparedness is not fear. Preparedness, guys, is awareness and it can save you. So the more you understand what's happening and especially if you live there beneath your feet, the safer you actually are. So, and I hope guys that you are safe. If you want to support the channel, link is in the description. If you want to support the channel with coffee, click the join button for a membership and please like and hype this video and look at the next one wiped out if you haven't seen it. And if you have seen that one, choose one of the other ones or go to my channel start page, click on videos, click on recent, crazy stuff interstellar object three i atlas guys but i'm silent now i'll see you in the next one click here